Hello everyone, in this 5 part tutorial we'll see how to create this broken clock for manipulation using Adobe Photoshop. Alright, fantastic, so let's get to it. Alright, now before we're gonna start this tutorial, make sure to download all the images that we'll be using to create this image. In case you want to follow along with this tutorial, you will find a link down in the description below where you will find all these uh, stock images that we'll be using. Alright, so let's go ahead and open Photoshop. And then I will go to File, New. And I will uh, create a new document with 1920 in the width and 1080 in the height. 300 in the resolution and RGB in the color mode and it will be okay all right now we'll go ahead and open the background that we'll be using which is this one in here so we'll take it and open it in Photoshop and then I will take it and drag it to the other tab in here and I will close this all right now we'll zoom out a little bit by pressing alt and scrolling with my mouse in here and I will press ctrl T so I can enter the transform mode and I will make it bigger so it will fit uh, the whole canvas just around here now let me just make this in the center now I will uh, rotate it so it will uh, line like this alright now I will uh, right click and choose warp because I want to make uh, the ground to look a little bit curvy like this so I will uh, go in this angle in here and I will take it down a little bit as you can see this will make this part to go down so I will just do that and I will go to the other one here and I will take it down too alright now I will go to this uh, part in here and I will bring it a little bit up just around here you can see all right and I think it looks good and I will one click on this check mark to commit the change as you can see now we have the ground looking a little bit curvy in here and that's what we want now I will uh, delete this background in here and I will rename this PG for background Alright, now we'll uh, apply a little bit of adjustment to this, so I will go and choose, let me see, a hue saturation first. So I will desaturate uh, this image a little bit, so I will put down the desaturation a little bit around minus 25 or minus 30. And then I will go to adjustment again, and this time I will choose a brightness and contrast. And I will crank up the contrast up to 100 you might need to experiment with these values that you will be doing in case you want to do your own you can do that all right so i will go to adjustments again and this time i will choose let me see gradient map and i will open the gradients in here and i will change these colors so i will start with the white i'm gonna change it to let me see I think I will change it to a red color a little bit warmer color I think let me choose red and I will go to the black and I will change it to a yellowish color all right and I hope it's okay now I will change the blending mode to multiply and then I will put down the opacity around 50% and as you can see this will give it this warm uh, color to it as you can see now I will create a new layer on top of this and I will call it light and then I will go to uh, the gradient in here and I will make sure that my gradient is uh, this one in here and I will make sure that white is my foreground color and my gradient style it will be this reflected one is a, it's a, the fourth one in here so I will press shift on my keyboard 
and I will one click and drag down a little bit as you can see this will create this gradient in here which looks really good now I'm gonna press ctrl T and I will take it and drag it down just in the horizon in here all right now I will make it a little bit wider by pressing alt and I'm gonna drag and as you can see this will make this other one in here to be as this one in here and then we're gonna do the the same as we did for the ground so I will right click and I will choose warp and again I will take this angle and I will put it down and I will do the same for this one and this one will do it for the, the top one in here too alright and I will one click on this check mark to commit the change as you can see this will look like it's foggy kind of but it's alright now I will go and I will change the blending mode of this to uh, overlay and I will put down the opacity around 50% as you can see I don't like this uh, brightness in here so I will uh, apply a layer uh, mask to this and then I will grab a regular brush and uh, the opacity I will make it around 20% and I will make it bigger and with the black as my foreground color I will uh, delete this from the ground in here as you can see alright I think this looks good alright now I will create a new layer on top of this and again I will call it light and we'll do the same with the gradient but this time I will, I will choose this uh, radial gradient in here is the second one and again I will press shift and I will one click and drag it like this now I'm gonna press ctrl T and I will press alt and I will make it wider just like that as you can see all right and I will one click on this check mark to commit to change and let me change the blending mode to soft light to see what it will look like I think it looks good all right now let's uh, duplicate this light by pressing ctrl J and then I'm gonna press ctrl T and I will make it smaller just like that so we create this kind of lights going from here all right now I will uh, apply a level adjustment to this so I will go and choose levels and I'm gonna try to darken it a little bit in the midtones in here so I will take it and darken the midtones quite a bit on 0 0.70 and the white let me see all right and the black all right i think this looks good all right i like this now we'll select everything in here by pressing shift while i'm uh, selecting this level and by pressing shift and one click like this it will select the whole thing and then I'm gonna press Ctrl G and this will uh, make them in a, a group and I will call it VG for background and there we go we have uh, the background uh, created in here in one folder all right now let's go and open the clock image that we'll be using which is uh, this one in here so I will take it and open it in a new tab and then uh, I will uh, cut it from uh, this background so I will go and choose uh, the elliptical marquee tool from here let me choose the elliptical and then I will uh, make a circle that will fit uh, this clock so I will press shift and I will uh, drag it like this and I will try to make it fit with the clock and then I will press ctrl J and as you can see this will uh, move it to uh, a new layer in here and I will call it 
clock. Alright, now we'll switch to my move tool by pressing V on my keyboard and I will take this layer and I will drag it to the other document. Just like this. And I will close this tab. Alright, now we press Ctrl T and by pressing uh, Shift and Alt on my keyboard, I will make it smaller. Just right here. And then I will take it and pour it just about here. And I will rotate it a little bit. So it will make this a little bit to fit like that. Alright. And I will press enter. Alright, it already looks like it's sitting on the grass, which is good. But we need to make it look a little bit uh, believable than this. So I will uh, apply a layer mask to this uh, clock layer by one click on this layer mask icon. And then I will go to my brushes. And I will choose this uh, grass brush in here. If you can't find it, uh, just go to this gear icon. And you know, uh, one click on this reset brush. And this will uh, reset uh, the brushes to its uh, default, which is coming uh, with uh, Photoshop by default. And you will find this grass uh, brush in here. So I will go and open the brushes so we can make a little bit of changes. If you can't find this brush, just press F5 on your keyboard and it will open. So now I will uncheck the transfer and color dynamic because we don't need it for this. And then I will make sure that uh, I'm on the layer mask and uh, my foreground color is black and the opacity is set to 100% and I will start deleting like this so this will make a uh, look that, uh, that uh, the grass is in front of uh, the clock which is what we want. Alright, I think this looks good. Let's zoom out and see. Alright, I think this looks good. Now uh, it's time for us to make uh, a shadow. So I will uh, make a new layer under this uh, clock layer. So I will press Ctrl and one click on this uh, new layer icon and I will call it shadow. And now we'll go to the brushes again and this time I will choose a regular rounded brush but I will make sure that the hardness set to let's see 60% to, to 70 let's go with 60 and then I will uh, make sure that my foreground color is black and I will one click like this and as you can see this will create this circle which is what uh, we want now I'm gonna press ctrl T and I will move this to right here and I will make it bigger just like that now I will right click and I will choose distort so we'll uh, make it look a little bit uh, to go with the, the proportion of the clock and let me move this all the way in here and this one just like this all right All right, and I will one click on this check mark. Now I will uh, put down the opacity around 50%. And then I will make uh, a new copy of this shadow by pressing Ctrl J. And this time I'm going to press Ctrl T again. And I will make it a little bit wider. As right here. And then I will right click and choose distort again. And I will try to... It's me redo that so i'll press ctrl t again and i will make it wider like this and again i will right click and choose distort and i will take this one and i will move it like that and then i will take this one and i will try to create this double shadow in here All right, and I will one click on this check mark to commit the change. And let me put down the opacity of this first shadow that we did. 
around 40% and I will put down the opacity of this shadow copy so let's see 20% and we start to get in a really good shadow let me go back to this first shadow in here and I will press ctrl T and I will make it a little bit thinner all right I think I will apply a blur to it so I will go to filter blur and I will choose motion blur and angle I will keep it zero and let me go around 100 distance in the pixel in here and let's see I think it looks good and let's go to this shadow copy and I'll press ctrl T again and I will make it a little bit thinner too all right now I will uh, make a new layer on top of the shadow copy and I will right click and I will make the hardness around 30% and I will one click to make a circle like this and then I'm gonna press ctrl T and I will put it under the clock in here and I will make it wider uh, so right here all right and I will press enter now we'll put down the opacity around 50% or so alright let me blur it a little bit so I will go to filter blur motion blur again and let me see let me go with 71 and let's press ctrl T again Alright, I think it looks good. Now let's merge uh, all the shadow together. So I will select them, the three of them. And I will press Ctrl E and I will call it Shadow. And now we can play with the opacity of them. Alright, so now we're done with the shadow as you can see. But uh, here's a trick uh, to improve uh, the shadow a little bit more. So now if I uh, double click on this shadow layer, it will open the layer style dialog and I will go to the outer glow and uh, the color I will choose a green color that it will match the the grass uh, this color will work fine so it is okay and the blending mode I will set it to multiply and then the opacity I will put it uh, around 40 and then I will add a little bit of noise uh, around 15 percent and the size it depends on uh, whatever uh, it will match your uh, image but I would keep it 79 pixel and I hope it's okay and as you can see this will add a little bit of uh, realistic feel to it which looks uh, really good all right so that is it for this uh, first part of this uh, forum manipulation and uh, I will see you in the second part of this all right don't forget to subscribe and comment and you know wait for more tutorial and peace